This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We continue our coverage of the Philadelphia district attorney's race with Republican nominee Beth Grossman. She's a prosecutor with more than 20 years' experience serving in every unit in the Philadelphia district attorney's office. She is a fourth-generation Philadelphian who says she is committed to seeking justice and improving the quality of life for all Philadelphians. From 2007 to 2015, she led the city's public nuisance task force, which handled civil asset forfeiture. The controversial practice enables district attorneys to seize people's property and cash, even if they are not convicted of a crime. Grossman was previously registered as a Democrat, but changed party affiliations over, she says, disgust with the excessive corruption by Democratic Party officials. In March, then-incumbent Democratic District Attorney Seth Williams was indicted on corruption and bribery-related charges. He's set to go on trial later this month. This is part of an ad released by Beth Grossman's campaign. So, based on that and my need and my want to bring integrity and ethics back to the district attorney's office, that's why I decided to run as a Republican uh, in the district attorney's office race. I needed a change, um, and I think the city needs a change as well. It has been 65 years of a democratic city, and having a one-party city creates an absolute political imbalance. Beth Grossman now faces a tough battle in the upcoming November election against Democratic rival Larry Krasner for the district attorney seat. Philadelphia has been a staunchly Democratic city for more than 60 years. However, Grossman's campaign notes Donald Trump received over 100,000 votes in Philadelphia during the presidential election, and district attorney candidates typically need only tens of thousands of votes to win. Well, for more, we're going to Philadelphia, where we're joined by Beth Grossman, longtime Philadelphia prosecutor. Beth Grossman, welcome to Democracy Now! Why are you running for district attorney? I'm running for several reasons. First of all, as you earlier played for your audience, and first, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. But I'm running first to restore integrity and public trust to the DA's office. As mentioned, our current district attorney, Seth Williams, is under a federal indictment and is set to go to trial uh, in a few weeks. That being said, I am also running to ensure that people have or are entitled to a good quality of life and a high level of public safety in all neighborhoods throughout the city, and as well to ensure that that the law, which the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, through the DA's office, when we enforce it, is done so fairly, appropriately and justly. Uh, well, Beth Grossman, I wanted to ask you, we mentioned in the lead, uh, uh, the, uh, the period of time that you, uh, you handled the unit that also dealt with civil forfeiture. There's been a lot of criticisms of civil rights violations uh, as a result of that uh, forfeiture program. I'm wondering if you could respond to those, uh, those claims. Well, I'm not going to concede that there are civil rights violations, because we followed the law as set statutorily and as well as case law through the court. But that being said, I am happy, should I be elected as different district attorney, to reevaluate the practice, perhaps focusing on those who are convicted of crime, as well as I think the important thing is really to focus on prevention so we don't have those that are dealing drugs or have drug properties. I think maybe that's the, the way we should start looking at it now. What are the other issues that you think are critical right now? Well, we're having a spike in crime in Philadelphia, which is always one of the— which is the critical issue. Recently, several weekends ago, nine people were shot, including a one-year-old sitting on a porch. We had two people found shot execution-style in a car a couple days ago, and one of our own city council people was stabbed in front of his own home, coming home from work. So I think at this point, it's really to focus on decreasing violent crimes in Philadelphia. We have a long, hot summer ahead of us, and it really gives me concern as to what that is going to to bring. Uh, I'm wondering on your perspective on the the, the war on drugs. Uh, clearly, that's been a big focal point of prosecutors across the nation for decades now, and has driven the mass incarceration rate. You're concerned about how the war on drugs has been uh, has been carried out uh, by law enforcement. 
I will say, I think it has failed. I think I do agree with you on that point. I think, as you said, it, it has led to an enormous amount of mass incarceration. And I think, you know, it, 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 the criminal law is almost like a pendulum. And I think we're beginning to see, and have been, that, first of all, addiction is not a crime. So there are really those out there who are suffering from addiction who need treatment. We also need to get education and prevention out there for kids in school to make sure that they are educated about things such as pills. Uh, we need to focus on those who are prescribing fill pills recklessly. That could be done through legislation and investigation. And then for lower-level drug dealers, you know, are there types of things like diversionary programs that we can focus upon? Your position on the death penalty? In Pennsylvania, it is it, it's just it just makes no sense economically. The last person who was involuntarily executed in Pennsylvania was in 1962. The last one who voluntarily waived all of his appellate rights was in 1999. So it really, except in extreme, extreme cases, if we have an example of terrorism and a first responder is killed, or the case like the, the gentleman who went in—not the gentleman, but the individual went in and shot nine people in a church down south, those are the examples I would consider. But for the most part, most part I think utilizing the death penalty in the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office is not economic. Sound. I wanted to ask you about there some of the— too many. It, 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 um, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted oh, to ask no, you about, about some of the things that Donald Trump has said about our cities. Uh, when he was running for campaign, he basically said the cities were out of control, when actually the crime rate has been dropping in most American cities now for years. Uh, your sense of uh, uh, the Trump administration's policy toward uh, crime and the cities? I am— I'm not— I am focused on, in this race, and as I, as I have been for two decades, in what happens in the city and county of Philadelphia. That's what concerns me, and focusing upon that. And, yes, crime has gone down, but in the past couple of weeks, it's also gone up. So that is really what my concern and focus is, and what preventative measures can we utilize and use to make sure that it does not peak and that it continues to go down. That is where my focus and concern is. Beth Grossman, I wanted to ask you about a piece in Mother Jones that was headlined, Philadelphia cops shoot and kill people at six times the rate of the NYPD. And it says, in a city where blacks and whites each make up about 45 percent of the population, almost 60 percent of the officers involved in shootings between 2007 and 2013 were white, while 81 percent of suspects involved were black. So, that was from a DOJ report. But the headline from Mother Jones, Philadelphia cops shoot and kill people at six times the rate of the NYPD. Your response? Well, I certainly haven't seen that article or the number, so I don't know what that response—you know, what a detailed response I can offer. What I can say is that shootings in Philadelphia by police have decreased enormously. The, the, what I was reading to you, though, was from a DOJ report from 2015. Okay. And my response is, hopefully, that number will continue to go down, and that shootings in Philadelphia by police officers to any individual in Philadelphia will hopefully continue to decrease. And we have to work to prevent that through crime prevention strategies, to community policing, to building trust within the community, between the community and with the Philadelphia Police Department. I also wanted to ask you about stop and frisk, which has been, uh, obviously, a big issue here in, in New York City, but in many other cities across the country, as well as in Philadelphia, in terms of disparate impact on the African-American and Latino communities of stop and frisk. I'm wondering your view of how it has been implemented uh, in Philadelphia and what you would hope would be changed by law enforcement uh, if you became district attorney. Well, as the latest report from, or the numbers from the Philadelphia Police Department, is that stop and frisk is going down. So I think that must continue to go down. And I just hope, again, as I said before, I think with those numbers going down, when there is stop and frisk, I think only in 2 percent of the cases is anything found. It's a very, very low percentage. So I think those numbers must continue to decrease. And with that, I think you will gain, you know, more trust between and more cooperation between the community and the Philadelphia Police Department. And I think when there's that trust, in a lot of ways, I think it builds stronger relationships and people can join in and help want to participate in anything that will lower crime within his or her neighborhood.
You were a Democrat for a long time, then you uh, switched party affiliation to run. But as a Democrat or a Republican, uh, what are your views on President Trump? I am running this race at, to be the district attorney of Philadelphia. So what my views are of the president are irrelevant to this race, quite honestly. What concerns me is the quality of life and public safety for all Philadelphians, whether they are Republican, whether they are Democrat, whether they are independent or they belong to any other party. That is what my concern is. Beth Grossman, we want to thank you for being with us. Longtime Philadelphia prosecutor, Republican nominee for district attorney for Philadelphia. That does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Nermeen Sheikh, Carla Wills, Laura Gattas, Diener, Sam Alcoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey Masood, Sharina Nadura. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.